General. May I see your credentials? Certainly. You ought to have the key. Yes, it arrived by special messenger late this afternoon. to remind you of the necessity for absolute security on this, General. No. I realize that civilization itself may depend on it. Good luck. Sergeant, send that Lieutenant Robertson from Security Sector 3 in here. Robertson reporting his order. Sit down, Lieutenant, and relax. As you know, Robertson, your Sector 3 has not been cleared for receipt of materials on Project Visitors. So I'll have to give you a verbal briefing for relay to Colonel Harrison. I ask that you not take notes, but that you absorb everything you see and hear. Now, due to certain events which I'm not at liberty to disclose, we feel that Sector 3 will be the probable place for the next contact. Now pay close attention to the information recorded on this film. It was prepared by L section of our UFO division. This latest military film concerning Project Visitors was obtained from the remote controlled high altitude satellite Space Eyes, as well as from ground tracking stations. The latest ship sighted was of a completely unfamiliar design and came under hyper-radar and infrared surveillance at 2300 hours yesterday. The alien ship veered for a close pass at the United States Remote Meteorological Laboratory in orbit 15CX. No attempt at communication was made. The orbiting object then resumed its Earth intercept course at a rocky point along the Sierra Madre in the western portion of the United States. The ship then set a low altitude course to the east at an extremely low rate of speed. The official evaluation of headquarters command is that the space vehicle is probably manned, will affect the surface landing and must be presumed to be unfriendly. It is imperative that absolutely no public information be released at this time to prevent the probable worldwide panic. Infrared scanners lost contact with the vehicle over the central United States in the general area of security sector six. Any questions? All right, Lieutenant, your transportation's waiting. You should be back in your sector within an hour. Oh, well, Lieutenant, you tell Colonel Harrison that I want those infrared scanners manned every minute, 24 hours a day, and that's an order. Yes, sir. Take off. <laughs> Red scope. 
Yep. Moving body. Get it on the scanner. Wonderful. I only found out about it after I got in the Air Force. Go to close scan. Yes, sir, Sergeant. Harold? Hmm? Harold, somehow I had the feeling that... that... all oh, that we're being watched. Well, sure we are, Bill. The kids near the cars. Later on, we may watch them for a while. Right now, let's get back to minding our own business. But, Harold, I just know they're watching us. Good. Now that's over. Let's go back. Wait. The feeling I have is like... It's like someone out there is watching us. It's just your imagination, pussycat. There's no one kicking. Oh, I truly admire science. What's up? Nothing, sir. Just testing the infrared equipment. That means you're playing Peeping Tom again, right? Right, sir. Culver, how many times have you been busted for pulling shenanigans just like that? You mean this year, sir? All together. Three times, sir. We're here for a reason. A reason important to the national security, and don't ever forget it. No, sir. No, sir. We're here to watch the skies and not the skylines, right? Right, sir. Uh, you're ever so right, sir. Bad things are going on up there, right? Right, sir. Uh, right. Uh, what kind of things, sir? Never you mind. You're here to watch the sky and not the skyline, right? Oh, boy, are you ever right, sir. Uh, right, sir. Now that that's established, let's take a look and see how the infra scanner's working. Harold. How about that, pussy kid? Yeah. How about that? <coughs> Sir. I think I may make Harold my hero. Well, back to business, ma'am. I have just got to look that girl up when I get into town. But how will you find her? I'd recognize her eyes. Any place. I'll clue you, Corporal. The place most of these kids end up is... The, the Pokey! Of course not. They're good kids. They end up at the terrace at the lake. Not that I go to places like that myself. Oh, heaven forbid. But I've heard of them. Whatever the lieutenant says, uh, sir. I'm with him, sir. <laughs> I'm sure of that, and I got news for you. You never will. Say, there is one thing. I was wondering if you could tell me how to... Well, I can't read my own writing here, let's see. Could you tell me how to get to first base with you tonight? Well, at least I tried. Trying's all we ever do, ever since we hit this town. We should have never come here in the first place. Guess a guy's got to be a native in this burg before Dan will give him a break. Don't give me that. Let's go home. I'm bushed. This is country, man. Things move slow here. I tell you, I got a tip that this town's a cinch for a quick buck. So all we have to do is get some kind of pitch going at the fairground. Now all we have to worry about finding the right thing. Skip it. I'm going to bed. We'll pull out in the morning. Well, I'm loaded for action tonight. I'll take a drive and see what I can pick up. Fat chance. Remember, the car is half mine, so drive carefully. Your half's the front seat. I won't be using your half much tonight. 
Oh, big lover. Oh, mouth, no action. Want to look back to the boarding house? No, I want to walk off my great expectation. I wouldn't want to hold back the wheels of progress. Or should I say the progress of a big wheel? You know what? When he kisses her, I see explosions oh. too. Come on, come on. Stop talking. Let's watch. <laughs> Dead sure. Well, it was probably a plane going down. Anything could happen with these crazy electrical storms we've had. That's it. Low lightning. What else? Or do you still believe the old Bailey house is haunted? Maybe the ghosts have come back. That old place was built before the Civil War. Could be. Well, how's your recruiting coming along, Lieutenant? Not bad. <laughs> hey, why don't you uh, Shanghai a couple of them? Are you kidding? <laughs> Wonder what they're jabbering about. I don't see any girls around, so what's keeping you Romeo so busy? Jim just saw a spaceship. Only one? With all the beer he drank, you'd think he'd see at least six. <laughs> and in different colors. This one was green. Oh. I always preferred the yellow ones myself. <laughs> Say, speaking of uh, the yellow ones, <laughs> why don't y'all go over and talk to that Air Force recruiting officer? So that's what he is. I've seen him hanging around town. Yeah, that's what he says he is. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, boys were just kidding about seeing a spaceship, Lieutenant. Everyone knows there's no such thing. How many times do we have to deny it before people will believe us? Well, excuse me, flyboy. Better watch out. The way things are going, he may be giving some of you orders next month. Man, I'm booked. They're dragging me in feet first. I thought you had a date with Susan tonight. I do. I'm picking her up at 9.30. She's, uh, fussing with a new dress. Yeah, don't put us on. We know you're waiting for an old man to get out of the house. What kind of dress takes that long to get into? You've got to admit, Susan's got a lot of the right things to put in the right places. Yeah. And they're all mine. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> right, we'll see. Another carload of them blasted smooches on my property. I'll get the law after them.
Ritzum. Tonight, as usual. Well, why not? We're only young ones. Besides, I'm going to show you the moon. The moon I can see any time. You can. Hmm? Hey, whoa. Take it easy. Not so fast. I'm out of breath. It just proves you love me, that's all. I'm eloping with you tonight. That's proof enough, isn't it? It sure is, seeing how your father hates me. No, it isn't that bad. Hey, coming up here was a great idea. The gang doesn't suspect a thing. And we'd be back before they even miss us. Oh, no more sneaking up here to be alone. And no more outsmarting your father. I mean, he is a city attorney. That'll make it official. Do you like it? Oh, it's beautiful. Let me try it on. Uh, uh, that's bad luck. Come on, we're wasting time. Hey, cut those lights. Were they having a night ball game? Hey, let's not attract attention. Turn them off. We are on old man Bailey's property, and I don't think the police like us up here. Yeah, and I can see your father helping me tonight of all nights. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. I'd hate to run into old man Bailey. I, I can drive this road blindfolded. You've had enough practice? A lot. But never enough. We've made it. At last, we've hit the jackpot. Turn off that light, you bum. Wake up, I said. Mike, we've got it made. We're millionaires. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go to bed. But this is different. It's big. Oh. Now, look. I'm not trying to give you a pitch, but get this. You and me are going to put on an exhibition with the first and only Truly authentic spaceship! You woke me up to tell me that? Told you it was big, didn't I? Well, I've seen one. Just like all these jokers have been saying. It's big and round and glows sort of funny-like. And gives off this funny sound like... Like that. Oh. Like that, huh? Yeah. And it landed over somewhere near that old house that's supposed to be haunted. Great, isn't it? All right. All right. But when I'm rolling in the dough, don't say that I didn't invite you in. Okay. You're invited out. I'll handle it myself. Go on! Go back to sleep! Sleep your life away! always at night. About this so-called spaceship of yours. Just where do you think it is? From what these kids said, it must be somewhere northeast of town. Well, that checks with the last report we had from the radar station. I assume your man had it on the scope. Hadn't we better get right out there, sir? The general was pretty sore at us for letting the last one get out of our scope. Army intelligence really scooped us that time. Scoop, did you say? Just a figure of speech, sir. Well, I hope so. Lieutenant, there's just one thing I want to caution you about. Yes, sir. In civilian life, you were a publicity man. What are you getting at, sir? Just this. 
Our job is to prevent a possible nationwide panic by keeping the information from the public. I figure a public information officer is about the last thing we need. I didn't request this assignment, sir. I know that. But get this straight, Robertson. If you leak one word of any of this to your cronies, I'll have you court-martialed and shot. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. Yes, indeed, sir. Good. Now go down the hall and get your men. And tell them to load their weapons. The road. We want to get there in one piece. <laughs> Relax, honey. It's only about a half a mile to the highway. We'll make it. Nothing to be afraid of. Thunder must have cut him when we hit that thing. Are we stuck here? Well, we can't drive on it. We're right off the rim and I haven't got a spare. Look, we'll go to the old Bailey house and call the police. That's all we can do. feeling that whatever's in there this is a lot safer than what's out here. Hello? Anybody home? Hurry, Stan. We've got no right to be here. I wonder where he keeps the phone. I wonder if he has a phone. <sighs> I'd rather you did it, too. Opening strange doors isn't the thing for a good, clean, living American girl to do. You're right. You can never tell what's on the other side. Hey, Stan. There's the phone on the wall. Oh, thanks. Now, you see, there's nothing to be afraid of. You just keep your wits about you and things begin to take on the proper perspective. Oh, you men, so masterful. I know. You're a very lucky girl to have a guy like me. Mm, keep telling me. Operator, give me the police department. It's an emergency. Hello? Um, 
my name is Kenyon, Stan Kenyon. I'm out here at the old Bailey place. Yeah, yeah, John. What's the trouble? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure, you've seen some little spacemen. I know, from another planet. Look, do me a favor. If you see him again, will you uh, give him my love and tell him to go home? Well, it's Saturday night, all right. That just made it official. He thought I was kidding. I guess the lightning got it. Hi, Mr. Bailey. We hit something with our car, and we came up here to call the police. You were out. The door was open. That don't give you the right to walk in. Who was it you hit? But it wasn't a person. It, it was a thing. Oh, it don't make no difference. It all spells people. And people spells trouble. I knew it. I knew it was going to happen if you kids didn't stay off my property. Yeah. We'll call the police, all right. The phone's dead. That's what you say. Look, we didn't kill anybody. I mean, it wasn't it, a person. It, it was a space thing, a, a monster. I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> you kids been drinking? No, sir. What's your name, Sonny? Stan Kenyon. I worked out at Blender's gas station. Yeah, I thought I'd seen you before. We didn't hurt anything human. Mm. I took... Okay, we'll go. And you tell your friends... They'd better keep off of my property, or they'll get a backside full of rock salt. Yes, sir. Now you get. All right. All right, come on, get. Okay. <laughs> to send some cops out here and chase these smooches off of my property. Uh, all right. Yeah. See that you do.
Mike, it's Carl. Now listen. Listen, Mike. This time I've got proof. What is it, Carl? Now listen, Mike. I can't tell you what it is, but I swear I'm telling you the truth. I can't tell you what it is. See, because I don't know what it is. It's stuck under a car. Now listen, Mike. Get a cab and come out here. I need your help. Yeah, well, that's too bad. I've, I'm going back to sleep. But Mike! But nothing. Goodbye. Mike! Don't hang up. Now listen. Do me just one favor. Clean everything out of the refrigerator. The refrigerator? Yeah. What I'm bringing home is perishable. We've got to keep it on ice. Got it, Mike? Including the shelves. Pats, my boy. You won't regret it. I swear to you. You do believe me, don't you? I'll be right home with it. Sure, everything out of the refrigerator. Everything. Got it? I got it, I got it! Jet pilots have been telling us they've seen. Now you're cooking with gas. Sir, enough of the jokes, Lieutenant. If those things turn out to be unfriendly. You've got a point there, sir. Shall I drive closer so we can get a better look? No, let's, let's stay right here. Something may be watching us right now. Airman, get me guard headquarters on that shortwave radio. I'm going to get some engineers right out of here and see if we can get inside those things. You think we should get some photographers, sir? Lieutenant, when you've been in the Air Force as long as I have, you learn you don't have to think. All you do is follow standard operating procedures. Yes, sir. In this case, SOP calls for engineers, not photographers. Excuse me, sir. I've got the National Guard. Give me that thing. I'm going to 
support this personally. Yeah, come on, let's see what it is. What is it? It's one of those space things, a live one. What's making that noise? He's banging away at the fender of the car with some kind of a hammer. Oh, let's get out of here. I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, how much further? Just about another quarter of a mile to the highway. Oh, I wish we had stuck to the main road. These shoes weren't meant for plowed fields. I know, honey, but believe me, it's shorter. Okay? Please go. The thing must have believed you after all. Come on, let's go back there. The police will take care of those things. Okay, now let's have this again. You say you were driving along without your lights? Well, yes, sir, but that didn't have anything to do with it, so he just suddenly appeared. Suddenly appeared? From out of the dark. Oh, we were really scared, man. I'm glad you guys came along. Yeah, I'll bet you are. Doc, over here. Now, kids, before I take you down to headquarters, I want you to do something for me, okay? Sure. See this nice little balloon? Well, I want you to blow it up. Balloon? Mm -hmm. What for? Are we gonna have a party? Never mind, just blow. Hey, come on, look, we're wasting time now. Aren't you gonna do anything about the spaceman? It, it may be a whole invasion. Blow, I said! Man says blow, he means it. The balloon test, hey? Yeah. Did you ever hear such a cock and bull story? Spacemen, spaceships. Wow. In my days, we were content with pink elephants, but kids these days. And tough, the gal says to me, you don't call him human, do you? <laughs> what do you think about that? Well, what can you expect with all these bad books being written nowadays? Hey, Mr. Detective. I'm finished. Now, can we get going, or shall I throw a little confetti around for you? You know, fella, for someone who's committed a serious crime, you are very anxious to get to the police station. A serious crime? You call killing one of those monsters a crime? Something's weird around here. Mm-hmm. Something or somebody. Come on, let's go. Now, if you'll just read this before you sign it. Look, this is silly. We told you what happened. Now, why don't you do something? That's exactly what we're doing, miss. This is not a statement. It's a confession. Now look, you admit driving the car, don't you? I told you that. And with the lights off? Right, but that... Now look, buddy boy, whether you realize it or not, driving without your lights and killing a man is against the law in this state. Killing a man? You don't call that thing a man, do you? And I haven't even added in drunk driving yet. But when we get the balloon test back, that's another strike against you. Look, officer, my father's city attorney, and I demand that you send for him right away. I was waiting for that. Well, miss, it so happens that I know your father, and he's already been sent for. He'll straighten you out all right. Look, uh, I'm not saying another word. Now, you want to try to beat it out of me, you go ahead. Beat it out of you? It never fails. Try to be nice to a young punk, and next thing you know, you're up on charges of using the third degree. What's this about the third degree? Oh, Daddy, these people are crazy. Stan and I have had a horrible time. Thought you told me you were going out with Bill Moore. 
Not with this, this roughneck. But don't you want to hear about the monster? I heard that ridiculous story when the sergeant called. Now listen to me, Susan. If it's humanly possible, I'll get you out of this mess. As for this boy, he can take his medicine. Thanks a lot. They're ready for the identification, sir. We'll be right over. If you'll come with me, we'll make the formal identification. Look, Mr. Rogers, wait till you see this thing, and then maybe you'll believe us. Probably under remote control. Would you like to take a walk out there in the open and test your theory? Well, no, sir, not especially. Then shut up and start thinking of a way to explain this thing without throwing the whole nation into a complete panic. Yes, sir. Beg your pardon, sir. Maybe if we fire a few rounds at it, we'd scare someone out. Anyhow, get some reaction. All right, go ahead. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Robertson, give me a volunteer to operate an acetylene torch. We're going to get inside this thing and see what makes it tick. Yes, sir. Are you still on that kick? You see, Mr. Rogers, I didn't exaggerate. Look, Mr. Rogers, I, sir, I swear, I, I'm telling the truth. It, 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 was, it was a spaceman. I've heard enough of that. I saw it. You know who he is? Well, according to a driver's license we found on him, his name is Carl Fenton. We also found out he lives at 121 Maple Avenue. Where does he work? As far as we could discover, he doesn't. He, uh, he and a friend of his kind of just drifted into town about a month ago. A friend? Yeah, a fella he was living with. We tried to call him to come down and identify the body, but he, uh, well, we didn't get an answer. I see. Uh, can I talk to them alone for a moment? You mean here, sir? Mm, at your office. All right. Get this boat. You're lucky in one respect. The man you kill is a nobody. There's only one person who's interested in the charges against you, and that's his roommate. But, Daddy, I swear to you, Stan didn't kill anything that was... Quiet, Susan. At least Stan has the sense to listen. Now, tomorrow I'll go over and talk to this Carl Fenton's roommate and see what we can do to help Stan. Come on, Susan, I'm taking you home. I won't go unless Stan goes. Don't be foolish. You're not liable. Yes, I am. Stan's lying. I was driving that car. Hey, now, wait a minute. You've covered for me long enough. How much longer, man? We've got a deadline to make. We've almost got it.
What the? Looks like this gun exploded over here in the baby place. Okay, let's go. What was that? Something blew up. What's so smart about that? Don't you see? They killed that man. And then they dented the fender of my car to make it look like we did it. It's a frame up. And we thought they were mad at the car. Right. Honey, somehow we've got to go back out there and get something, some kind of evidence that they'll believe. Because if we don't, I'm going to jail. But how? They won't let us. I know it. You're burning itself out in a hurry. Let's get a prowl car out there right away. Yes, sir. Now, what about those two kids? I've talked a little sense into their heads, sir. It just takes a little teenage psychology. They're gone. The little fools. Forget it. So you talked some teenage sense into them, did you? Look, officer. They were scared to death. Don't put this in the record. I'll take the full responsibility. You still here? Well, of course I'm here. Where should I be? I saw your car drive off. So naturally I saw... Oh, no. If those kids have stolen my car... Now, Mr. Rogers, you said you'd be responsible. I hope you know what you're doing. So do I. So do I. Now, Corporal, if you'd have been looking at your radar instead of that scanner, we wouldn't have let that spaceship slip by us. I'm looking, I'm looking. It's too late. It is kind of late. I wonder if they for forgot about us. Just look at the scope. But not too late for that date in town. Okay. I'm looking, I'm looking. But it's kind of dull, though. Blip, blip, blip. Yeah, blip, blip, blip. Hey, I should snap on the infrared uh, and take a peek at them kids naked. And get us court-martialed, you mean? Okay. Uh, snap on the infrared. Uh, we'll just uh, take a peek at those kids, uh... In the line of business. What else? What do you make of it? I think I have some weird monster film on TV. Nothing as ugly as that could be for real. Oh, no. Have you looked in your mirror lately? Funny, ha, ha, ha. But it must be near the end of the picture. How can you tell? Well, that searchlight swung by, right? Right. Well, that stupid monster's beginning to stumble. I'll bet you five bucks he falls right off that cliff. Have you seen this picture before? Scott's honor. No. You've got yourself a bet. I still think you saw that picture before. Snap on a scope before you cost me some more money. Can do, Sergeant. Can do. Blip, 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 blip. Oh, blip. shut up. Gee, Stan, I'm worried about taking this car. Compared to everything else, a little car theft doesn't even matter.
you think, honey? Not a thing. Don't get too far away. I'm frightened. Don't be afraid. We can handle this. We, dear friend, you are supreme commander in charge of that department. and they didn't find anything. Yeah, I guess you're right. We might as well go on back. Unless this whole thing is a dream, which is a polite word for nightmare. Come on. There's a reflex action. Just seems like the natural thing to do out here. Hey, I wonder if any of the gang saw those things. What do you mean? Well, there's a lot of them out here. And if any of them saw it, that would convince the police that we're telling the truth. You want to bet? If the police saw it, they'd say we'd been drinking. You know something? Sometimes I think no matter how many kids try to tell the police something, they still wouldn't believe it. An idea. Let's drive out to the point and see if any of the kids are still there. What do we got to lose? I'm sorry, Stan. I, I just can't relax. Yeah, I know what you mean. This would happen tonight of all nights, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I expected to be frightened on my wedding night, but nothing like this. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. station was right about one thing. The one person who'd be interested enough to listen to us is Carl's roommate. We just gotta find him. But where is he? Oh. Wait. 120, 121 Maple Street. That's it. We'll go over there and get him. Okay? Okay. Come on. That is, without a doubt, the craziest story I've ever heard. Look, will you just call and check with the police? They've been trying to get you all night, but nobody answered. <laughs> Thanks to these. <laughs> when you live with a big mouth like Carl, you gotta have a secret weapon. Oh, please call the police. Please. Come on. Okay. Okay, but if this is some kind of a joke... Whatever you say, don't mention our names. If they find out we're here, we're done for. Don't worry. Hello, operator. Get to the police station. Hello, police. This is Mike Lawrence. I live at 121 Maple with my roommate, Carl Fenton. Did you say Carl Fenton? We've been trying to get a hold of you. Your roommate was killed tonight. 
A hit and run victim. Killed? Do you know who did it? Yeah, there were uh, two kids, a boy and a girl. They've uh, given us a slip, temporarily. But don't worry, we'll catch them again. You mean you had them and they got away? <laughs> I've been living in a fool's paradise. I thought the police were alert. Uh, yeah. And were they scared? You should have heard the stories they told. All about little spacemen and... I have. You have what? Oh, uh, nothing. Never mind. Thanks a lot, officer. Thanks. Uh, can you come down tomorrow and claim the body? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Well, we tell you the truth? Your story checks out. Carl tried to tell me something about it. Now will you come with us? I'm a nut. Yes. Give me a chance to get dressed. Now, I'm not saying there is a claw, mind you. But if there is one, go and get a picture of it. Hey, great. <laughs> it's a hot one. What's so funny? I'm just thinking how Carl will feel when I put him on exhibition as the world's first victim of a spaceman. Well, let's get going. You said the police had your car. They do. This is Susan's. Battery's going dead. When's the last time you got some water? Whenever the filling station man asked me. Not the radiator. He needs the battery water. What's that? How about a little push? I'm a guest here, remember? Okay, okay. Come on. Like this. No top, no motor, but a brand new shiny spotlight. Somebody afraid of the dark? Oh, I didn't get it for that. What did you get it for? Well, the crown makes an excellent mirror. Well, at least she's got muscle. No brains, but muscle. your language. Elvis is very sensitive. Elvis? Yeah, the gang calls her Elvis. She shakes and shimmies a lot, but she can really go. What's going on here? It's all right, Sergeant. One of our jets crashed. 26. Yeah, had a busy night, too. Been flooded with calls from people who say they've seen flying saucers and little spacemen. <laughs> I wonder how that rumor ever got started. Now you got me, Sarge. Well, uh, good night. Night, Sergeant. Rid of them, just can't stand fuzz. Fuzz? <laughs> well, uh, that's what my nephew calls him. That kid has me brainwashed. Yes, sir. I uh, gave him a story that uh, one of our jet planes crashed and that we were taking care of everything. Did he believe you? Colonel, sir, you are talking to the man who made the papers believe 45-year-old B-girls were teenage maidens. This was duck soup. Find any signs of life, sir? Anything, I mean, uh, besides the fuzz. Whatever flew that thing down here went up in smoke. 
Nothing left but ashes. Job well done, sir. Makes you proud, doesn't it? Clean all over, sir. That's the ticket. Being a part of a show like this, protecting your country from alien invaders. Think of it. Nobody but this special unit and the President of the United States know what really happened here tonight. You mean you think we know what happened? Well, of course we do. I think. This top secret security business is like scratching, Colonel. Once you get started, it's hard to stop. <clears throat> Just what are you getting at, Lieutenant? Spit it out. Colonel, did it ever occur to you that there might be other things being hushed up by other units just like ours? see anything. It's in there. It's got to be. Hey, wait a minute. I got an idea. I'll give you some light. What was that? That was it. Mike, did you see it? Oh, I saw something. W whatever it is, it's on the floor. Dan, I'd never believed it. Seeing's believing. Man, could I clean up with a dozen of those. What could they do? Play six pianos. Or three pianos and three drums. What a combo. We call them, uh, the fingers. <laughs> You're pretty sick. Oh, and I may be. I gotta get a picture of this. If it lets you live. It's gone. But, well, I saw something. It was right there. Look, come on, let's get him back to town. I mean, they've got to believe us now when Mike backs us up. They can't accuse him of being a hysterical kid. Well, all right, come on. Let's, let's get out of here. Absolutely calm when you call the police. I'm glad you told me. This darn car. Turn off the lights and give you more juice. Good idea.
in the bushes. Sam, use the spotlight. Turn the spotlight on him. Are you off your rocker? No, she's right. It burns them up like it did the claw. Stan, remember the battery. You'd better cut the headlights. They don't do any good. Now what'll we do? Spotlight's getting dimmer. The battery's getting dimmer. Like we're goners. That's it. Let's make a run for it. Another step, we've got to rest. Okay, honey, all right. We should be safe here for a minute anyway. Do you think they killed Mike? I don't know. I saw him pick him up and carry him away. Oh, we've got to get help. We've got to. We can't leave Mike to those those creatures. Oh, what are we going to do? I don't know. What if we turned ourselves into the police? What good would that do? Well, don't you see? Once we get the police out here, we'll get them to help Mike some way. Hey, i got an idea. Come on. Where are we going? To use Bailey's phone. He won't let us. He'll shoot us. I'll be charming. Come on. Right. Look, I'm trying to tell you, we want to give ourselves up if you'll just come out here to the Bailey place. If you're not wanted anymore, go home and sleep it off. Well, what about Carl? Well, according to the autopsy we did on him, the cause of death was uh, heart failure due to alcoholism. Well, how about the fender on my car? Now, you said that proved I hit him. Oh, you hit him all right, but only after he was dead. After? Well, the way we figured, he was drunk, and he must have ran his car off the road down the hill. We found an empty liquor bottle in it. Yeah, that's what gave us the tip-off. He must have managed to get out of the car and climb back up the hill, but the exertion and the liquor were just too much for his ticker, so he conked out. And then you kids must have come along and run over his body. But won't you come out here? What for? You're cleared. What about stealing your car? Don't you want us for that? Well, we will get the car back. Just don't sweat it. But we stole it just the same. Young lady, don't worry about it. Your father took care of it. Now, please, don't bother me anymore. Just go home and sleep it off. Daddy, he came through again. Yeah. Hey, how about the gang up at the hill? 
Oh, no. Not at a time like this. Oh, don't be silly, honey. I mean, they'll still be there. Maybe they'll help us. At least they'll believe us. What makes you think so? Because they're not like our parents, and they won't think that we're drunk or nuts or something just because we're young. Maybe you're right. It's worth a try. Come on. And the police wouldn't believe us. Bill? Bill, will you help us? Come on. I'll show you the way. in tomorrow morning's paper. Oh, aren't we regular devils? <laughs> <laughs> for this clearing where there used to be an ice plant, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah we got it. Okay, now turn your lights off. Now look, when we get up there, we surround the clearing. Once everybody gets in position, then I'll blow the horn, like this. That'll be a signal for everybody to turn their lights on. You got it? Yeah, yeah. we got it. Okay, let's go. But we burned them up. I think we oh, were dead. Yeah. I don't know we really we got them. It was... But how did I get here? Where am I? Don't you remember? Spacemen. <laughs> hey, it's old man Bailey. Man, when he fires that cannon, he means business. Let's get out of here.
bet that nobody will ever believe us. Of course not. Why should they? After all, we're just a couple of crazy kids. But, but what if they come again? What if there are more of them around right now? I guess all we can do is hope that the next guy that runs into one is 100% certified adult. <laughs> I guess you're right. You know, being young does have its compensations. Like what, Nancy? Ralph. Ralph. How'd you like to be my best man? And Cheryl can be my maid of honor. Hey, man, have you slipped your track? I just got back on it. Daddy, he really will never believe it. So why tell him? <laughs>